Hey guys, Super Bro Mike here, and in today's Bendy and the Ink Machine video, we once again and take a look at Sammy Lawrence and his rather morbid backstory as we have new information that reveals exactly how the music director at Joey Drew Studios became quite so insane and why he worshipped Bendy. Previously, this was a bit of a mystery, something we could speculate on but never had definitive answers for. Now, with the advent of a newly released audio log on the Joey Drew Studios YouTube channel, we can finally come to some more concrete conclusions to explain just why Sammy grew so twisted and obsessed with that dancing demon. To begin this video, let's take a listen to this new audio log, which was recorded by Sammy in 1935, and then we will analyse what he is saying and end this video with an exciting new theory about his character. Take a listen. Every time I turn around, there's more work to do. Four cartoons almost complete, and all of them need a tune by tomorrow. Typical Joey planning. I'm working so much, I'm starting to see Bendy in my sleep. That smile. He's always watching me. A few more months of this, I wouldn't be surprised if that grinning demon drove me completely insane. That smile. Something's just wrong with that smile. Can't put my finger on it. Shake it off, Sammy. Best get back to your songs. Someone has to keep the little devil happy. The first thing to mention is how we once again hear about Joey Drew's uncaring attitude toward the workload put upon his employees. Sammy backs up what others have said in the past, most notably Henry himself in Chapter 3. Joey worked his staff to the bone, with little care for their physical and mental welfare. In his relentless pursuit of wealth, fame, and general success, Joey was willing to stretch his workers to breaking point, crushing their spirits, and sending them insane. And woe betide anyone he felt was faking illness or complaining without good reason. So this pressure was felt across the studio, and once again referenced by Sammy here. It sounded like he had a never-ending supply of bendy cartoons to write musical accompaniments for, and while we know he eventually got help in the form of lyrics written by Jack Fane, it obviously wasn't enough to stop Sammy's eventual breakdown and spiral into madness that followed. Everything we've heard about Joey Drew points to him being a man of ideas, but one who had no idea how to successfully implement and plan out many of the concepts he came up with. He would correct people's work cluelessly, making bad decisions every step of the way. It's likely that many of Sammy's songs were rewritten by Joey last minute, only adding to the stress of churning them out at such a pace. For an artist like Sammy who once took pride in his work, having to force out half-baked musical numbers every few days in bulk would be hellish. He would be working long hours on material he wasn't even very proud of, and such a work ethic would have a heavy toll on anyone. I believe it was this initial routine, the pressure from Joey to continuously produce content, that first pushed Sammy Lawrence towards being mentally unstable. Of course, at this point in 1935, we know that the ink machine itself hadn't yet been developed and certainly hadn't been implemented into the studio. That occurred during 1943, as per Thomas Connor's most recent audio log. So this mental anguish Sammy suffered at the hands of his employer must have lasted close to a decade. Imagine going through nearly 10 years of such treatment. It would cause anyone to snap. We also have reason to believe at this point in time that Sammy and voice actress Susie Campbell may have been in some kind of relationship. Now we have no firm details on what kind of relationship this was, however it does seem to be a romantic one based on Susie's dialogue in Chapter 3 and the words of Wally Franks taken from his audio log recorded in 1933. Still, he was once a very handsome man. Speaking of which, I heard her talking with Sammy the other day. If I'd know better, I'd say there was magic there. We know that this likely led to a messy breakup after Susie was replaced by Alison Pendle in the role of Alice Angel, a role Sammy wrote songs for and worked with actresses closely with in his recording studio. This pressure in his personal life as well as his work life also may have contributed to Sammy's fractured mind. But what about his obsession with Bendy? 
Well, this audio log fills in the blanks there too. Although, in order to get the full story, we're also going to have to analyse evidence found throughout the game. Sammy makes comments about seeing Bendy in his sleep due to how much work he is doing on the Bendy cartoons every day. He sees this character everywhere, from projectors that roll cartoons as he writes compositions to the cardboard cutouts around the studio. That grinning demon is always on his mind. It seems as though Sammy became consumed by his work, writing music for Bendy became his new religion, and based on the long hours he was forced to work by Joey, that work and the character character of Bendy became his entire life. This led to Sammy eventually building his own little sanctuary, hidden in the walls of a recording studio where he could write in peace and quiet. However, this isolation also had a very bad effect on Sammy's mind, and once again, his mental health worsened. Imagine spending most of each day working alone, and doing this for years on end, with only a grinning cartoon character for company. A character which stared at you while you worked long hours every single day. Welcome to Sammy's life at Joey Drew Studios. In this fortress of solitude, Sammy grew insane and bonded with a cartoon character who he dedicated much of his adult life to writing cartoons for, and eventually even worshipped. But why and how did this worshipping begin? Well, this is where I believe that, like many other characters at the studio, Sammy was yet another victim of Joey Drew's manipulation. Sammy was well aware of the ink machine installation. I mean, you couldn't really escape it at the studio, and the drainage pump was even in Sammy's own office, which he remarked caused him no end of stress as it disturbed him every single day. Now I have this ugly pump switch right in my office. Just what I needed. More distractions. Now this was part of a reason that he moved into the sanctuary itself, where he finally went insane. However, the promise of what the ink machine could bring each worker at the studio has always seemed to be to make their dreams come true. Joey used motivational talk and outright lies to lure various staff members into cooperating with his experiments in return for this promise. Susie, for example, was promised the ability to become her favourite character Alice in real life. Sammy, on the other hand, seemed to be promised to be freed from his inky prison. He had fallen prey to Joey's experiments and became trapped in an inky body. Before this, he felt trapped writing songs day after day with no end in sight. But because of his unhealthy obsession with Bendy, he continued to do the work. I doubt Sammy would have listened to Joey and his promises, however he would have listened to Bendy himself. My theory here is that it seems likely Joey used the character of Bendy to communicate through and speak to Sammy, perhaps leaving messages for him beside the cardboard cutouts, preying on Sammy's fragile mental state every step of the way. Similar to how Joey invited Henry back with a letter, perhaps Joey used some form of written communication to speak with Sammy, posing as Bendy. And Sammy, being completely insane at this point, took these instructions from his master and did whatever he was asked, which meant becoming part of the Ink Machine experiments and helping Joey sacrifice other workers at the studio, resulting in a never-ending supply of souls for Joey's reanimated characters. So Basically, to break it all down, Joey communicated through Bendy to speak to Sammy and get him to capture and sacrifice other workers at the studio to bring his cartoon creations to life and keep Joey's hands clean and free from murder himself. This is why we see all the sacrificial signs during Sammy's portion of the game. Almost all of the coffins featuring the bodies of the workers we later see reanimated are also found in Sammy's music department, meaning he was almost certainly used as Joey's proverbial hitman, taking out whoever Bendy told him to. He appears from the shadows to rain his sweet blessings upon me, but love requires sacrifice. This is obviously big news and makes a lot of sense when looking at all the evidence. It explains why Sammy believes Bendy will be the one to set him free. It also explains why he feels betrayed by the Ink Demon later on. It even explains why he carries Bendy cutouts around and uses them to lure Henry about the studio. Much in the same way, Joey posing as Bendy first would have lured Sammy himself around. However, there's still one portion of this new audio log we need to touch on. 
Sammy mentions Bendy's smile and says he feels there's something not quite right about it. While this may simply be more evidence of Sammy reaching a breaking point and growing ever more paranoid, it also lines up with something else. And other members of the Bendy community have noticed this too. Looking at Sammy's mask, we see a hole that always seemed to be there so Sammy could clearly communicate to us. But with this latest comment from Sammy, it raises further inspection, and what do we find when taking a closer look at this hole? Well, it looks an awful lot like a certain rejected image sketched out by Henry when originally designing the character. In this original concept, which we also assume Joey rejected and redesigned, Bendy looked far cuter and had an almost Astro Boy appearance. It seems Sammy shared Henry's sentiments for a more naturally happy looking Bendy. After all, the final Bendy design almost has a rictus grin. He seems forced to smile, almost like the forced happy work conditions Joey Drew pushed upon his employees. This natural happiness was what everyone at the studio, including Bendy's original designer Henry, strived for. They wanted to work for a caring company, where they could take their time to put out quality content they felt proud of. Sammy, who we are led to believe has met Henry in the past, or at the very least heard of him, probably felt the same way. He aligned with Henry's design and work philosophies. He dreamt of being given the time to create art that would bring both him and his audience real joy, not the rushed and stressful work ethic Joey promoted in the guise of fake happiness, an insincerity which was plastered all over the face of Joey's final bendy design, and a fake happiness also imposed on the staff of Joey Drew Studios. So, if he was to become a disciple of Bendy, he was going to become a version of that character as he saw him, with a genuine smile creating something he could be proud of, a sacrifice to the Ink Demon he believed would finally free him from all of his torment and despair. And that's it for today's video, please remember to give it a like if you did enjoy watching, and maybe drop a comment too, as well as subscribing to the channel, and turning on notifications so you never miss an upload. This channel specialises in variety horror content, including creepypasta readings, horror gaming facts and theories, and general interest pop culture horror videos. So, if you're interested in all things spooky, you'll find something to enjoy here at Super Horror Bro. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.